welcome back to Copperhead Customs and welcome back to another episode on our salvage flip car series. This one is pretty special, so stick around to see if you think it was worth us doing it. So like I said, welcome back. This is episode two on our salvage auction flip car series. If you've seen episode one, it was on our little Mercedes A190 that we picked up for a very cheap price. It's a pretty simple fix. Now we did have a few issues off camera with that one. We, on the test drive, it went into limp mode and dropped a cylinder misfire. So we had to put new spark plugs and coils, but we still sold that pretty much straight away as soon as I quickly fixed those issues and made a hefty profit. So now we've got our second video out on this and we've got a new car today and this one I'm pretty chuffed about. As you just seen, it is a Chrysler 300C and you've seen it get loaded on at the auction house. Now what you didn't see though, was that the forklift driver actually made the car hit the forklift time and put a little bit of damage on it, which I'm in talks with the auction company about getting rectified. But this is a 2007 Chrysler 300C wagon with 
the big 5.7 Hemi in it. Now this car, on all the pictures and everything, looked very clean. It had been stolen and had fingerprint dust all over it, which is a fair sign that it was stolen. But it actually said it was stolen. It said it had no key, but there was a key inside it. Now I went over the pictures of this, because that, like I've said, that's all you get to go off of is the pictures. And to me, the car looked very, very clean, i.e. no dents, no scratches that were visible. So it also states that it is a no wavy car, which is it is not listed on the written off vehicle register, which means for Americans, it is clean title. So it is not a salvage title. Now, looking at the interior pictures and everything that I did, I thought this K was fairly low K. Now, it didn't, the Ks were unknown because obviously it's been sitting for a long time in the auction house. It actually has a date on the windscreen of the 11th of 23. We are now in the 5th of 24, so it's been sitting for a pro over six months. Now that would have been due to it being stolen and having an investigation done on the car for evidence. So, no battery, unknown Ks, but looks pretty nice. I paid a pretty hefty price for this for a gamble, but I think the gamble will pay off. Now I've just gone and connected a battery so that we can, a battery pack, so we can open the tailgate to get to the main battery, which I've purchased a new battery to put into it. And I just turned the ignition on. And ooh, oh yeah, 78,000 kilometers on this one. Unheard of for a car that is 17 years old. So we might have just hit the jackpot. Now what we'll do now is we'll come around here and I'll quickly show you before we see anything else, I'll show you the damage that the forklift driver did, which I'm not very impressed about. So this car was dead straight. This is all just fingerprint dust. But this here, this is damage caused from his forklift tine, where it is, the car has slid into his tine and bang, it's a dead straight crease there. Damage and it's actually dented in here and dented the guard. So I'm not impressed about that because this car pretty much doesn't even have a scratch on it bar that. So, the plan now is, I'm gonna put the new battery in it. We've got a tire that's flat. We've got one rim that looks like it's wrong, but I've sourced a set of stock rims with decent tires that will just replace the four. We'll put the battery in. We'll start it up and fingers crossed that the motor is sweet. And if that's the case, we might've just hit the jackpot. So, I'll get that battery connected then I'll see if it starts. Then I'll bring you back in board. We will attempt to unload it. We'll do a walk around on the car. I'll show you all the good, the bad, the indifferent on it. And let's see how we go. Okay, as you can see, we have got it unloaded. And so obviously, yes, it started and purred like a kitten. Now, when I first started it, I was a bit worried because it kept turning itself off. Then I remembered the Chrysler Jeep thing, which is the immobiliser does that. So I pressed the unlock button, boom, it started and purred. And for not being started for at least six months, maybe longer, the motor was pretty good. It had a little tiny bit of da -da -da just to start until the oil pressure ran itself around. And then it was sweet. So if I can do this, where is it? There, one hand. Check that out. <laughs> so, the alarm works. At any rate, that would have been very loud for you. Sorry about that. Obviously, you need to have it unlocked before you open the bonnet. So, any freight. Now, I can't get this. There we go. So, there's our Hemi 5.7. I just think this engine cover is, yes, it's not quite on properly. So, we'll address that, but that's nothing. Other than that, it all looks pretty clean. Needs a bit of a detail. This is probably fingerprint dust everywhere. Yeah, that will all come up good. So yes, basically just a good clean. We might as well have a little look at the oil while we're here. And it's not too bad looking, eh? It even looks, let me hold that predator for you. Actually, isn't overly brown. So uh, we will give it an oil change though, but the oil doesn't look too bad. So all the fluids are good coolant etc so under here we're pretty happy as you can see front end is all good 
a uh, little tiny mark there nothing might even buff out and there's as always on these bumpers there is a little tiny bit of a split on the bottom it is standard on every single one i have seen now stone chips are all very good it's very hard to see because all of this fingerprint dust that's what all that is we have to polish wash polish all that off windscreen no damage all of this side is near on perfect I did see a little tiny blemish just there that's been touched up so we've spotted that coming around to the back the back is perfect pretty much everywhere all good coming around to this side all good except this is just wipes off except for our little bit of damage to the door and guard I think the guard will probably hopefully push out but our door if we have a close look at it is a bit We've got damage to this, which is probably unrepairable realistically if we want it to be mint. And there's a little tiny crease line just there, a little crack in the paint. So we can repair this. But like I said, I'm talking to the auction company about either them getting it repaired or some kind of reimbursement. One thing that I did just spot though was there's this bit of racing tape put just here. And underneath there, there's a little tiny bit of rust. So we're going to have to repair that. And we'll just try to give it a... Seeing there's no metallic, we should be able to give that a little tiny blend off and get rid of that. So that's basically the only bad part of the body. If we come to the inside, like this car is ridiculously good condition, guys. All the door handles work. For people that know about these, the door handles break. So what happens, they don't break, they're still usable, but they unclip from the front. So when you open it, the whole thing comes off. So all of the door handles are really good and nice and tight. Now the bad part, I suppose, about this is it has the grey interior, which I am not a fan of the grey interiors in these, but it does need a very good clean and a de-smell. We'll have to get the ozone machine onto it, but as you can see, the seats, everything, it's all in very good condition, no rips, tears or anything. Now we've got the original stereo, it's got a stacker in it, and the Boston speakers which are very very good like i said good detail in here one thing i've just noticed is up there there's something missing there and i'd say that was probably a drop down dvd player is what i'm thinking so we're going to have to see if i can source one of them to fix that i only just noticed that about 10 minutes ago in the back here back seats are all in great condition we'll fold all them up later and the other thing is we have both this fold out tray and the floor fold out floor as well so overall this car is in immaculate condition this is a 2007 so we're in 2024 so you do the math it's a 17 year old car and now we can't i won't i don't really want to start it I'll just yet it is just about out of petrol so i want to wait until i put some fresh fuel in it then we'll fire it up and we'll take it for a drive later now, this is the other thing. All of the tyres are pretty well shot, but this back rim is a different rim for some reason, I don't know why, than the other three. So these are the Chrysler rims. That one's wrong. And of course, this tyre will not hold air. It has a damage to it, but the rim itself is pretty good. And we are missing the center caps on both the backs, but one of them, of course, is the wrong rim so if you look here it says stolen 16 11 23 so that's how long it's been sitting and it says here no keys so at some stage a key was either given to it by the owner or something and on the other side it just says no wather which is it's not on the written off of vehicle which is what i said it is clean titled and if we look here this is when meth tested. It was tested for meth, methamphetamine residue on the 24th of the 4th, 24. It's been checked for sharps, hazardous materials, and it's been meth tested. So the 24th of the 4th, 24. So that wasn't very long ago, was it? That was only last week or something. It was tested for that. And obviously passed. I hope. <laughs> so we're going to ozone that anyway. 
Uh, we'll clean it and ozone it. We've got to get all the fingerprint dust off, but yeah, we'll clean it and ozone it. But uh, obviously it was sitting, basically, it's probably not only recently was what I'm getting at, it's recently gone to the auction house, so it's been sitting with the police since here to there, so for basically six months it's been sitting at the police. So, all in all, I think we've got, even with a couple of extra little things I've found, like the little bit of rust that we've got to repair, the DVD player, and even with that damage, I still think we got an absolute, well, I think we stole it, because I, we paid 4,125 was our winning bid. I think out the door it was 4,833. I'm pretty sure that's what it was, including all the fees and everything. And so that's what it owes us. We're not going to have to put a lot into it. Maybe even if you said we put a thousand dollars into it, which I don't think we will, but even doing the repairs and everything. So we did put a thousand, it will owe us under six thousand. Now, the cheapest one of these with huge K's is, I think, seven. They say they range between eight and fourteen. But there is not one with this lower kilometres in Australia that I'm aware of. So I honestly think this is probably maybe a 14 to 15 grand car. I don't know. That's probably where we might start it, I think, up there when it's finished. And it wouldn't take long. If it wasn't for that dent, it would probably be on the market this weekend. Um, I hummed and hard about whether we should keep it ourselves, seeing it's so, it's like a brand new car. But... At the end of the day, we'll see. I think I'll put it up for sale, like I said, for a fairly high price, seeing it is so nice. Now, as stated, I did not know what the kilometres were on this. It was unknown because the battery was flat. So we had no idea of... We, one, we don't know if it starts, it's blown up. We don't know any of that. But two, we did not even know the kilometres. So that was the gamble, but... This is where a bit of experience in the auction buying comes in. Looking at the overall condition of the car and the pictures. So we get a picture like that from each corner, basically. We get a couple of pictures of the inside. You may get a shot like that as well. You basically get about 10 pictures of the car. You get one under the bonnet. You, you know, you'll get one, one or two like this. And that is it. They are very sparse on their pictures. But from what I've seen, I couldn't see any scratches or damage or chips or hail dents or anything which told me this car was fairly low kilometred, is what I was hoping. It was definitely very well looked after. I was hoping it was going to be around 150,000 Ks or less. I actually said, imagine if it was 80,000 to the boss this morning. And when I turned the ignition on and it said 78, I actually danced around for about five minutes because it was like winning lotto. So that's enough dribbling. I'm going to go in now and I'll start hitting the Facebook of the marketplace and finding all our pieces we need. See if we can find that DVD player, source our wheels. We'll probably head and get them tomorrow if we can find them. And then tomorrow we'll come... I think we'll give it a wash and maybe a polish and do the inside and see how beautiful we can make this thing look. That said, see you tomorrow. Okay, so next day, it's getting late in the afternoon because we've been out all morning buying stuff. So we've gone and bought, these are the black rubber strips. I'm going to have to rejuvenate them a little bit and they stick on with double sided tape and they actually go up in the gutters up here I have seen them colour coded on certain cars as you can see there's the double sided tape there so what I'm thinking is when we get to the point of this we'll pull this tape and I'm really hoping we haven't oh it is just onto the top that little bit of rust and looking at this other car I've seen today, this is a fail spot for these cars. So I was hoping they weren't too much on the roof, but from the feel of it, it is. We're going to have to have a little repair done there. But my idea was the black rubber 
will one, take your eye away from it, and two, I was hoping that it was all going to be just in the vertical and we could just have it completely hidden and not even have to do this, but not a biggie, but we're still going to put those little stripes in. I didn't think this actually had this, but it has. That would probably look nice colour-coded, wouldn't it? But that we're going to do that. So we did, got that. Then in here, as you've seen on the interior, it was missing the TV screen that had been put in. Obviously, it was probably, it was probably a flash, like Apple CarPlay one or whatever. But what we've got on board is this, for $50 this was. So those stripes are 40 bucks. I was bartering with about an eight-year-old kid on them. I'll tell you, his little little Arab kid or something he was, and uh, Dad owns a wrecking yard. <laughs> And he wanted 50 or more than I worth 50, I'll give you 20. He said, oh, no, nah, 40 bucks, mate. That's my best. <laughs> I, got, I got out bartered by a bloody eight-year-old. Anyway, this is what we bought. It's a little DVD player, USBs and stuff go in there. DVD goes in the side. So roof mount little thing. And we've got the screen. I can't work out how to do it all. The screen in there, the little LCD. So we've got that, all the wiring, etc. for that. So that pretty much will, it's grey as well. And so that should actually really work in our interior to cover up our hole in there. So we'll put that in, that covers up our hole. Hopefully there's wires there that we can actually properly wire it in as well. So we've done that for $50, which is a bargain, because everything else was about 400. Then we've gone and bought these. I was looking around at different wheels, tyres. I was looking at just getting a couple of, you know, one or two of them. I bought them and basically had to buy a set. And then there was no sets that had good tyres. And the one set I found that had reasonable tyres, he wanted $500 for them. And to me, they're not a very attractive wheel. Now, the, the dilemma was... And we needed some center caps as well. So we had, by the time we pieced it all together, it was going to actually be more expensive, I think. So my dilemma was, I was in two minds, because one, we like the car to look original because it's so located. But two, these wheels will look so much better on that. Uh, so I was in a bit of a what to do, what to do. And in the end, I bit the bullet and went for these. So we got these rims for... $400 I paid for them. They're 22 inch rims and they have little center caps that cover this whole area and we got all the nuts, lock nuts, the lock nut tool. Now the two rear tires were a bit bald so I went and bought two new tires straight away so they were 175 each. So 350 for those two tires and 400 for the rims with the two, these two tires on them that are good. So all up 750 on the rims set up we were going to basically be very similar in price for the stock wheels so my logic is we'll have the mags on the car will look really nice i think we didn't go too bogan with those wheels i think they will actually look pretty good and these can be included with it so yeah like we're, and we're not going to go changing grills to the nicer grill or any of that there was one thing, I knew there was one thing. There's one thing I was thinking about buying today, but I forgot to go do it. It's the plastic covers you put on, like our last one had, that have the, so it looks like two circle lights, it's a little plastic cover. They were in silver, I would have had to paint them white. So they're 50 bucks. I'm still thinking about going and getting them. So basically we've got everything now that we need, bar we may have to go buy a door think we can repair the guard i think we'll just end up buying a whole new door and, and painting the whole door i think i'm still thinking about all that we're going to need a little bit of touch-up paint for either the whole door or at least just the little repair at the back so we need a little bit of paint and maybe a door so a door will probably cost us 200 maybe maybe cheaper but we are still in negotiations with the auction company so we may actually get refunded some money so with all that said, we're pretty much, you know, other than maybe a oil and oil filter, we're pretty much everything that we need to spend on the car we've done. So we're basically into the car for approximately $6,000. And I think it's a pretty nice car. You will see when we finish. 
for that price. Um, I've been trying to value it yesterday, and it's very hard because there's nothing, there's nothing with like this. As in, the wagons are very rare, and they're normally quite more expensive. A wagon with the V8, even rarer, and these sort of low kilometres, even rarer again. So this car is quite unique here. Uh, there's not really anything to compare it with, but looking at some of the sedans with these low Ks, and they're only sixes, uh, this is... It should be 14,000 easily, I think. Even if we were to drop to 12, we still will double. But I think we'll probably start it up around that. I think I'll probably start it around the 15,000 um, mark, I reckon, for this. Because, like I said, wagon, loquet, V8. So with those three things, it's pretty of a rarity. So, we will see how we go. So, But we can't sell it until we fix it. So... Let's now, got the jack out ready, let's jack it up, get these wheels on it, have a look. Now I'm not sure, we may have to just chop the bottom of the top ball joint. Sometimes you have to chop the threads down because they touch the tyre when you put the big 22s on. Remember that from some of my sedans, but we may get away with this. I don't know, we'll just have to see because it's not lowered or anything, but I think from memory the top ball joint... You have to chop the bolt, the threads that stick out of the nut. I think you've got to chop them off flush with the nut. And uh, let's get the wheels on, like I said. And we'll see how we go today. We might even try to give it its first wash. Okay, it is the next day, and it was meant to be raining, and I was going to take my car to a car show. But look at it, blue skies and beautiful, as always the way. any rate, back to our Chrysler. And as you can see, it's all cleaned. Now, we will give it a cut and polish, but this car is in exceptional condition. I know I've said it, but after washing it and giving it a bit of a detail, it is basically near on brand new kind of so we've given it a quick wash but now we want to cut and polish it there's still some if you look in close it's pretty hard to probably just but there's still a little bit of staining in there there's this little mark i don't know if that will come out uh there's a little little mark here hopefully that will buff off there's one there and then there was a little little bit just here you can see that. Hopefully that will buff out too. But the, the car just has a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know. It needs a good cut and polish. But it's not scratched or swell marked. It's actually pretty good. But yeah, good cut and polish will make it look immaculate. Now here's our damage. As you can see, it is fairly deep. As in, it goes in a good half inch. And it's into this guard. Now if you can see the little chip in the centre there. That's actually a little crease line hopefully you can sort it. it's very hard to pick it you might pick it from there if you pick it from there that actually goes so you know we can fix the car but it's just i'm just very upset by this so eh? um very upset by it okay our wheels that we picked were the perfect choice for this car i will say they when we take it outside they are the perfect choice the car looks so neat and so nice now they're not a bogan wheel they're a very classy looking wheel i think with the white i think that's a nice look it's not boganized it's not all low standard height i just think the car looks really really good with those wheels and that will not hurt our sale if anything it will enhance it so windows are all done we've got rid of all the fingerprint dust now we're just going to open this now just look at these door jams now i gave these a wipe but nothing crazy didn't scrub them 
they're absolutely flawless like in here i haven't even wiped in here at all look how clean now you don't get that from a car of this age you know in there that's normally filthy okay it is spotless this car has been so well looked after so we've done the door cards we've done the windows we've vacuumed it well there's a bit of crap on the seat here everything's been given at first wipe over with disinfectant so we've disinfected the whole car we have um, sanitized it now I may run the ozone machine through it but the little smell that it had is pretty much gone so as you can see absolutely immaculate condition this car is we come around to the tailgate and I've got to be careful because we're going to hit that skull but as you can see we have the privacy screen we have that which folds up and underneath that is let's just go get a towel to put up so i can use two hands to do this we make heaps more sense so we'll stick this so we don't hit so we've parked the car in a stupid spot haven't we right on that skull so we'll put that there like that boom now yes yeah, so we've got the privacy screen retracts beautiful now that we've also got this which folds up and then under there is the black rubber protector. Then under there is your carpet. And underneath that is your spare wheel. So, you know, ridiculous to have all of this stuff in it. Absolutely haven't seen one like this still in this condition. So that's all there. You can see no marks or scratches on the chrome. Of stuff you know you're shopping going in and out it normally gets all scuffed up um interior beautiful now what we have got is oh no, there's more to show you in there in a minute but we'll just go to while we're heading this way just show you under the bonnet the uh very healthy looking 5.7 liter oh where am i going there we go the wrong way and we've given that a little detail so that's looking beautiful all our fluids are good we may dump the oil but it's very clean but we'll probably just do oil and filter just for peace of mind i suppose just to say it's been done now if we come back to the interior we'll just go in here and we will put the key in the ignition and turn that on and if we look up towards the roof now there's our $50 DVD player that we just installed quickly and power button open it up you can see it works I just had a DVD in it turns swivels does all that good stuff so that $50 well spent I think there it's covered that hole DVDs go in the side you can put games and stuff in it so that uh, fixed up that hole you can just see the outline of the other one there just see that little outline so i think we'll get away with that anyway but it's gray matches the interior looks good and another little bonus i suppose you can put your stinky rug rats in there and they can play games or watch tv and leave you alone on a road trip so but it, basically we did it to cover the hole in the roof so only thing we've got an issue with is our TPMS, is that saying low tyre? Because it's saying that the front left is flat because it was flat when we took it off. And the TPMS light is on on the dash at the moment. Now, we have not taken this for a drive as yet. I still haven't started it for you guys either because I want to go and get some fresh fuel into it. So I'm going to go and get a jerry can of premium unleaded, put it in, then we'll probably take it for a spin. But our new wheels, I'm 99.9% .9 sure have the tpms sensors in so what it is it's a tire pressure sensor monitoring system and it's basically in the back of your valve there's a special valve and it has a little sensor in there now with these you cannot from all my research you cannot turn them off uh even with my scan tool or anything you can put normal wheels on take the car for a drive and that will beep and go crazy for a minute then the, the beeping will stop but i think the light will stay on we, we don't want a light on the dash so yeah the sensors are in those wheels that are actually for this car now 
this car can actually still read those sensors from what I'm reading apparently when you have it set up that other way if you pull up next to another one your car may read that's the the pressure of their wheels so any rate I'm pretty sure this has sensors in it in these new wheels so but I think when we take it for a drive get it away from those wheels take it for a good drive it should hopefully pick up these new ones and rectify all of that worst case if it won't we're going to have to take those wheels get those sensors out and take these wheels and get those sensors put into these wheels which the tie shops hate because they hate 22 inch rims because these are 22 inch rims with a 35 profile tire and tire shops absolutely hate them so they will hate me if that is the case Okay, so Chrysler, as you've seen, we did the roof repair, and while I'm talking, I will flick up some photos of it. Semi finished. Now, the car, at, as we speak, is in the crash shop. So I sent it in because I found out the value of this car after talking to all the Chrysler forums, etc. And speaking to people that have either just purchased a Chrysler wagon or just sold one in Queensland in the last few months the car is drop your comments now of what you think that car is worth <laughs> it's worth a lot more than I thought it was it is worth approximately twenty five thousand dollars to have just sold in Queensland in the last three months. One had 200,000 kilometres and sold for 23,000, and one had about the same as ours, 120-ish, and sold for 24,000. So a V8 Chrysler wagon, apparently they are very, very rare, very, very sought after. They don't come up for sale, and when they are in the condition of this car with low Ks, they are worth really, really top so it's worth a lot more than I thought so I decided to not do any of the repairing myself I decided to send it into a crash shop so that we would have a better result okay so he I did that rust repair on the roof and when I lifted the hatch open I noticed a little bit in the say this was the this is the hatch and this is the Part of the roof there was a little bit in in this vertical on each side it was hidden behind the paint but when you pushed it was a bit soft so i got him to cut them out weld new plates in and fix them completely respray the roof he's repaired the damage to the door and the guard and repaired the plastic trim 
and fully painted the door and the guard. There was a few splits. I won't go in there, it's too dark. There's a few splits on the front bottom of the front bumper. So I got him to repair them. So he has fully painted the front bumper. He then painted the bonnet and this guard as well. This card had a little blemish here. He painted that and the bonnet had a little mark somewhere. So he painted that. So he's painted guard, bonnet, repaired and painted the bumper, repaired and painted this guard, repaired and painted that door, and then did the rust repairs on the roof and repainted the roof. I also bought some little headlight covers with the two circles. So they were in silver. So he has painted them and installed them and installed the drip rails. And then I think he's going to cut and polish the rest of the car. So the car will look $1 million when it comes out. Now he's done that at a pretty good price. I think it was $950 he's charged me to do all that. Uh, so he's had the car a bit longer than he was expecting because we've had a lot of rain and uh, he had a few issues with other jobs. So it doesn't bother me as long as the car comes back. It's beautiful. So this is why I am... This video was meant to be released last week. I put it off. Uh, the car's still not quite ready. Should be ready this week, but I will need to get this video out because I have three others filmed and edited. They gotta come out in order, and this one is number two. So we're gonna release the video as it is. You're seeing what the car looked like. Pretty much done, but yes, now it's just, it's just a little bit better when we get it back. So I will show you footage of the final finished product in an upcoming video. You will actually see the car beautiful, okay? But at the end of the day, the car is registered, drivable, all of that good stuff. We purchased the car for basically, I think, was nearly $5,000 out the door. And by the time it's all said and done, I think we have seven and a half to eight thousand dollars in it that's registration roadworthy the paint work everything done uh, i'll check that and i'll put the figures on the screen you know, i don't know what we're going to exactly get for it but we are going to advertise this thing for twenty five thousand. so we'll get anywhere from 20 to 25 i'd say and i think you've got to agree that's some huge profits for a car that wasn't that hard to fix so this is a very successful one you don't get them this good very often i will say that generally you try to double your money if you can it's not always possible doubling your money is good you get the odd one where you'll do a bit better but you don't get ones like this too often where you basically are tripling if we get asking price we're tripling better probably better than tripling our money that doesn't happen okay too often but it can so this is a success you'd have to agree this one's a success drop comments on like i said earlier what are these worth where you're from i guarantee you they're not worth this sort of money and you'd have to agree this was a good one stay tuned because we've got a lot more like i've said we've got others already filmed edited just waiting to be released some are good some are not so good and somewhere in between so stick with us stick with the process of doing these hopefully you're enjoying them because we are having a bit of a break from our hot rods if you're new don't realize we build hot rods but i'm having a little bit of a break i started to get a bit burnt out on it i've ordered all the bits i've got a shed full of parts to basically finish a couple of them off i just needed a little bit of break uh, and youtube doesn't pay a lot of money it's a lot of work not a lot of money so uh, like nothing basically but a hell of a lot of work so uh it's just good to bring a bit of finances back in the mix on doing some flip cars and why not try to teach you guys something uh and just show you what else goes on behind the scenes get some videos out on that and i'm actually really enjoying doing these flip cars at the moment so yeah like i said a bit burnt out on the hot rods don't worry they will be all getting finished very soon 
we just needed a little tiny break from them and do some flip cars because the key guys don't force yourself to do stuff do stuff that you enjoy okay with all that said i'll say thanks for watching and i'll see you next week